hello and welcome back and today I want to talk again about mesh routers I know I know but stay with me it's important now today I want to talk about why mesh routers are so important so many of you get to the thinking and you understand the general idea of a mesh router that extends your Wi-Fi network in your home or office and then when you get to the bit where you're about to buy you look at the price and go what this thing's gonna cost me how much because Mesh router systems are expensive. They're expensive for a reason, and prices do have come down over time. We've talked about several mesh routers on this channel in the last few weeks. We've talked about the TP-Link, the Deco system, this one that's only about, you know, 180 quid for three of them. The Google one, which is probably the second most expensive of the ones I've got on the table. This one here goes for about 320, 330 quid for three of them. And we've got the Synology mesh system, which is about 120 for each one of these, making it over three nodes, the most expensive of the three that we're talking about here. So one, why are mesh so expensive? And two, are they the best option for you? Because we're all aware of other ways in which we can extend our Wi-Fi network. Well, firstly, in terms of why they're expensive, it's because they're not like a normal router. A normal router, much as like, a, you know, a router you'll get from your internet service provider, is effectively a Wi-Fi hub that has become more and more advanced over time. Some of them have lots of internal antenna. They have more ports on the rear, LAN ports there for wired devices, uh, improved support parental controls and guest Wi-Fi net networks, that sort of thing. But for all intent and purposes, your internet service provider's router that they give you is still a very, very basic device. They include it for, you know, for free because you sign up to like a 12 or an 18 month or a two year contract with them with that data, or that broadband connection you get. So it's not really free so much as it is included in that price. And that's why it's very hard to compare, compare routers from your internet service provider with that of mesh routes. It feels like you're buying something that you are getting for free anyway. Now, the reason mesh routers are, you know, a little bit more, a lot more hardware sophisticated is because at the same time as them having internal antenna that, you know, talk with your devices over Wi-Fi that you connect with, they also have a specific antenna, an internal node that is designed to talk with other mesh devices of their own brand. So the Google Wi-Fi has two times two um, aerial coverage, but has an extra node inside that is talking with other Google Wi-Fi nodes. And that with that mesh network, it's designed so that when you walk around your home or office environment on your phone, your tablet, your whatever device, if it's Wi-Fi enabled, that whichever node you're next to will be the one you connect with. Now, in real terms, what that means is, uh, well, we'll move away from that. A number of you might know that one popular way to extend your Wi-Fi network in your home or, uh, or business environment is to use power line adapters that allow you to run a CAT cable, a LAN cable, from the back of your router from your ISP into a mains power socket via one of these. So there's the connection there at the bottom. Then that connects into the mains power socket. And then at the other end of the house or business or whatever, or different rooms, you have another one of these that syncs together with the earlier power line adapter. And the result is that you create a new wireless connection, there's the antennas there, at that end of the house or business. And that Wi-Fi connection can actually clone your existing one and just act as a pass-through, and thereby giving you two Wi-Fi points with the same SSID name, the same security credentials, the works. They'll all be on the same LAN, all on the same IP network with a slight difference in the middle. So. Why is mesh better than that? Well, first and foremost, when you have that, those two paired networks, power line adapters are only good in homes that have good circuitry in place. And if your home has multiple circuits or is a very much older building with an antiquated system, it may well be the case that you won't be able to put power line adapters in your home or business. If you've got more than one fuse box in the house, that is a big, big no-no in terms of using power line adapters. The second part is the idea that you can't, if you have any connection waiver or a fault, or if you use like an extension lead, these can fuse uh, power line ad adapters considerably. And that can also lead to real problems later on uh, in terms of relying on that network. But probably the biggest problem with using that network compared to using a mesh network 
is simply that when you're walking along connected to, for example, the internet service provider router that you've got at one end of your house and you're connected to it and you're walking away, walking away, walking away, you can have your phone, whatever, rested on top of this plugged in if you wanted to. But if you're still in range of the original router, even weak, a lot of devices, and by a lot I mean most, Wi-Fi devices will not sever connection with that early router. And you end up with even having two identical named wireless access points with this power line adapter. Even if you're in this device's range, as long as you can still connect to this one, your device won't automatically kick you off in terms of the other one. You will have to either manually sever the connection or get out of range of this router so your device will then search and find that one. And that is the biggest problem with using that compared with mesh networks. Because mesh networks are designed to intelligently move a device to another node. Your device will never know the difference. Your device will only connect to the same network. But what will happen is if you have several Google Wi-Fi's in your home or the Synology mesh network, you carry on. And as you go onto this device, if you get close to another one, you will be moved onto it. It's done automatically in the background with priority control built into that software. And that's something you don't get from the tender. Now that might seem like an expensive proposition um, to do something where the tender might cost you, this will cost you 40 or 50 quid, and these are costing 100 and above. But it's about fluidity, it's about ease of access and reliability. On top of that, all of these Wi-Fi mesh routers can be used as independent routers. All of them arrive with great parental controls and different levels of security and tailored control of other devices. For example, and I'm gonna move the TP link slightly out here and focus predominantly on the Synology and the Google. Both of these arrive with Google Safe Search and Google Wi-Fi uh, Family Wi-Fi, which means that it has filtered lists of bad websites and good that you can cater and change and restrict and give access to at the touch of a button. On top of that, they've both got guest networks that are far more bespoke than just another network for your guests. It, you can actually detail what devices people can and cannot use. So you want them to be able to use the TV, fine, but you don't want them to have access to your NAS. You don't want them to have access to CCTV cameras in your home over the network with IP cameras, that the guest network on these more sophisticated routers can do that. Finally, the Google Wi-Fi and the Synology root, uh, Mesh Router Network with Synology Router Manager 1.2 allows you to assign multiple devices to individual users, create profiles for them, and these users can then have their internet access and websites and everything controlled or protected, depending on how you want to call it, in on mass so if one person maybe your children have a phone a tablet and a computer for their schoolwork you can set it at the touch of a button and on a schedule that at certain times of day they can only access certain kinds of websites educational websites perhaps and then at other times of day they have got limited access to social platforms and then gives them no access at night while they're asleep you can restrict individual websites or entire service providers, everything from WhatsApp to Skype to Facebook and more. These are things that mesh networks give you and that along with the constant coverage means that you, you control it from a single access point on your mobile phone. Whereas on the router or using the power line adapter or multiple you know, old routers around your house, although you'll have a coverage of sorts, you won't have that automatic snap between channels you won't have that one portal access point that lets you control manage and maintain your wi-fi network and that is pretty much where the money goes on a mesh router in the in the majority of cases mesh routers the money's going into the software control uh, rather than the hardware the antennas the antennas are important and the max speed is important but just remember that without a good software back end you're gonna struggle but thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you've got any questions about the right mesh network for you, stay tuned to this channel, like and subscribe. We are covering loads of mesh routers, all with videos for their software, as well as speed and coverage tests of their individual makeups in office and home environments. Thank you so much for watching. Cheerio, and I'll see you on the next video.